needing to perform any kind of emergency procedure is pretty rare and the ones you're going to encounter will usually involve the important systems of the aircraft such as the engines, the flaps, the hydraulics, landing gear and the electrical system. In this video we're only going to look at engine failures and restarts. If you want to look at other emergencies you can check out the manual. Single engine flight in the F5 it's going to be essentially the same as two engines. This is because both engines are near the airframe center line. And because you only have one engine running, you need to remember to auto balance the fuel to continually draw fuel from the other side as needed. And uh, you can also consider jettisoning your stores because you may not be able to maintain your altitude when you're extending the landing gear and flaps for landing. So if you have an engine failure, uh, you're going to maintain thrust on the good engine as required. You're going to jettison the stores if you need to. Bring the landing gear up, speed brake in, flaps as required. Then we're going to identify the dead engine. So if you have a dead foot not using the rudder pedal, that's going to be your dead engine. You can check that against the instruments. Then you can verify you have that dead engine by using that throttle and bringing it back to idle and then to the shutoff position. Then we can auto balance the fuel and attempt an air start if it's not due to damage or fire. All right, so we're in the F5 and uh, what we're going to do is simulate an engine flame out. And then from there, we're going to go on and look at uh, some single engine flight as well as restarting the engine. So in order to simulate it, you can pull the throttle back to idle if you want. Um, I'm just going to turn the left fuel shutoff valve off. This is going to cut the fuel supply to the engine. And it's going to induce the flame out. So looking at the engine gauges, for the left RPM we can see that it's above 20%. This is windmilling because we're flying along at airspeed. The EGT is low because there's no engine running. The nozzle is going to be wide open, which is what happens when the engine is turned off. The oil pressure is low and the fuel flow is also low. Now we have a couple of cautions result from this. We've got a left generator and left fuel pressure caution which we can clear because it's associated with what we've done. So now that we are flying single engine and it's important that you maintain control of the airplane. And to do that you need to be above your best single engine speed. And in the F5 that's going to be about 190 knots. So you can use the speed bug and you can bring it up to 190 knots. This way it gives you a reference um, just to keep in mind to not go below that speed or else you risk losing control. So if you look at the slip and skid indicator, you can see the ball's deflected a little bit to the right. And it's not really that much because, you know, even at this thrust setting, we do have that centerline thrust preventing that. So you're going to have just a tiny bit of right rudder, and that'll bring the ball back to the middle. We've used the instruments to see which engine is out. And we can verify that now using the throttle. So if we bring the left throttle back to idle, there won't be any change in the way the airplane flies. And that tells us we've chosen the correct engine. Now that's done, we can bring the left throttle to shut off and prepare to do an air start on that engine. Now if you have an engine failure and you need to climb, these are the recommended speeds you're going to need to fly in order to climb safely. So like I said before, the minimum single engine speed is going to be 190 knots. And if you're at maximum thrust, this is going to give you at least 300 feet per minute. And if you wanted to practice in single engine flight, you can just bring one throttle back to idle and that'll be good enough. Perform the air start in the F5, you've got to meet a few different conditions. First off, you need to be below 30,000 feet. Your airspeed should be around 250 knots. This will help provide enough airspeed to make the engine windmill. Then you need to get the ignition going. So there's two options to do that. You can either use the engine start push button and then bring the throttle to idle. Or you can simply use the afterburner because this will provide continuous ignition for the air start. Better prepare for the restart. I'm going to reset that fuel shutoff valve back to a normal position. And this will re-establish fuel flow for the left engine when I try and start it. Going to perform the air start, we're going to meet those uh, three conditions. Uh, we've still got the airspeed bugged at 190 previously, so we're going to bug it to 250 knots, so we have that target airspeed to work towards. And then we're below 30,000 feet already, so now we can lower the nose slightly, and this way uh, we can start gaining some more airspeed and getting up to that 250 knots, and I uh, get that left engine RPM windmilling a little bit higher. So once it's above that 20%, we can then hold down the ignition button for the left engine, and then bring the left throttle up to idle and then the engine start process will continue as normal then we can see the EGT on the engine rises as the process begins and our RPM starts increasing slowly and once the RPM gets to around 50% that EGT is going to start dropping down and the engine will stabilize and then we can use it again just like normal 
Now, if your engine had suffered damage or was on fire, you're not going to attempt to restart, obviously. And uh, it's going to be important to maintain your altitude and try and maximize your range so you can divert to an airfield. And if you can't maintain your altitude on one engine, then you'll descend at 270 knots. This will maximize your range until you can maintain altitude, at which point you'll be able to divert to your airfield safely and make an approach. So for this last example, we'll look at restarting an engine after a dual engine failure at low altitude. As we continue in this turn, we're flying along nice and fast. And as we roll out of the turn, we have a dual engine flame mount, which we can see by the engine instruments, and we're losing AC power to the airplane. So from here, we're just going to pitch ourselves up no more than 20 degrees and try and gain some altitude with the airspeed that we have. And then we can throw the throttles into afterburner to get that continuous ignition cycle running. And then once we reach 250 knots, we can slowly begin lowering the nose, trying to maintain that 250 knots as we start um, coming in on our descent. Just pitch to whatever you need to to maintain that 250. And then eventually everything comes back online as the engines restart. Now if you were already in afterburner, when something like that occurred, you would have to cycle the throttles out of afterburner and then back into afterburner. And of course, if you weren't actually able to get the engines restarted, then you would end up having to eject. That completes this tutorial on engine failures and restarts using the F5. Remember to be a subscriber and use that notifications button. And remember to fly safe and always check your six.